Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just rise as we begin to worship our God. Let's just begin to bless His. We are so thankful for this day. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we lift you high because you are worthy of our praise. You are the only God who's worthy, the only one who's holy, the only one who's worthy of our praise today. We exalt you, O oh God. We exalt you, O oh King. We exalt you. We exalt you. Come on, lift up your voices. That's not enough for our God. We exalt you, Abba Father. We say thank you for this day. Thank you for the breath in our lungs. Thank you, Abba Father, for allowing us to see another day. We exalt you, O oh God. We exalt you, O oh King. We exalt you. We exalt you. So we say be glorified be glorified we say be glorified oh God we say be glorified sing be glorified Glorify, oh, be glorified, be glorified, sing, be glorified, glorified, right here, right now, be glorified, be glorified in the heavens. Glorified in the heavens, in the earth be glorified, be glorified in the earth, in this temple be glorified, be glorified in this temple.
there'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. When the glory, when the glory comes, there'll be no words, there'll be no words to say. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. The weight of His glory is so majestic. We say, when the glory comes, when the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. There'll be no words to say. Oh, 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 oh. When the glory comes, when the glory comes, there'll be no words to say.
Use your voices and lift up the Queen of Glory. He's the Yahweh Sabah, the Lord of hosts, the Lord strong and mighty in battle. We lift up the name of glory. Yahweh 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 Song unto him, for he is worthy, he is worthy.
back to our life today. Got that together, fellowship in his presence. He is worthy. He is worthy. And to you are It's a beautiful day today to worship the Lord for the fact that we are alive today today is the last Sunday of the month for the fact we are alive today we should give God all the praises for the fact we are not sick in our bodies for the fact we are healthy today for the fact we are gathered in the midst of the brethren fellowshipping worshiping the kings of kings we should give him all the glory we should give him all the glory he is worthy of all our praises he is worthy of all our adorations. He is worthy. He is worthy. All the praises belong to him. All the praises belong to him. He is worthy of it all. He is worthy of it all. We are alive today. Maybe saw the beginning of this year. But we are more than half of we have got more than half of this year. And we are still alive today. We are healthy today. He has been blessing us. He has been leading us. He has been covering us. He has been prospering us. So he deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. He deserves all the adoration. The breath in our lungs is still hard. Our hearts are still beating hard. Our hearts are beating hard. We can talk. We can speak. He deserves all the glory. He has sustained us from the beginning of the month, from the beginning of the year. He has sustained us. He has kept us. He has brought us forth. Even when the enemy came, he rose the standard against the enemy. Even when affliction came, the Lord delivered us. Even when the devil came, the Lord shielded us. Even when the demons, even when the darkness came, he said, Go, we walk through the valleys of the shadow of death. He will see you, so he will see us through. And he has seen us through. So he deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. He's worthy. You are worthy of it all. Lord, you are worthy of it all. Oh, you are worthy of it all. cannot define words cannot define it words cannot define the goodness of the Lord in our life if I start today to start giving God praises of what he has done in my life personally I say words cannot define it words cannot define his graciousness words cannot define his faithfulness words cannot define his, his mercy nothing can define the grace of God we are here today, not because not because we are we we deserve it. But we are here today because of the grace of God. We are here today because of the faithfulness of God. We are alive today. He has blessed us, He has prospered us. So we He deserves all the glory. Worship Him in your own language. Worship Him in your own language. Worship Him in the Spirit. Worship him in the spirit. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, you are gracious. Oh Lord, you deserve it. Lord, you deserve it. Sing my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh Lord, our hallelujah belongs to you. Oh 
praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Oh, sing this song unto him. Our hallelujah belongs to him. He deserves it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Wonderful, oh God, for you deserve all the glory, oh God. Lord, oh God, you deserve all the glory, oh God. Lord, we are grateful, oh Lord, for all you have done in our lives, oh God. We are beyond grateful, oh God. Lord, words cannot describe how grateful we are, oh God, for what you have done in our lives, oh God. So, Father Lord, we give you all the glory, oh God. Lord, you are the God that inhabits our praises. You are the God that inhabits our worship, oh God. Lord, even as we have worshipped today, oh God. Even as we have magnified your name, oh God. Even as we have exalted your name, oh God. Father Lord, oh God, you, oh Lord, inhabit our praises, oh God. Inhabit our adoration, oh God. Our worship, oh God. Father Lord, Lord, I thank you. I commit the rest of the service into your hands, oh God. Oh Lord, let your way, oh Lord, be fulfilled today, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have worshipped. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. When you play the drums, it's, it, time seems to time tends to fly by. How are we feeling today? It doesn't it doesn't sound like it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You see, we've come to the house of the Lord today to praise him. And I don't know about you, when I'm in the presence of God, I'm filled with joy. So if you're filled with joy, stand up and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord. That's more like it. That's more like it. You see, when you're in the presence of the, in the, presence of the Lord, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that says yes and no man can say no, the one that says yes in your lives when the devil's trying to say no, you're filled with joy. If you're filled with joy in the presence of the house of the Lord, shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's more, that's more like it. That's more like it. You can have our seats. You can have our seats and enjoy in the presence of the Lord. See, I am here today to take our tithes and our offering. Um, they've sent the new accountant to take the tithes and offering, so it's only right. Um, so I just want to um, ask the ushers to... Um, share out the envelopes if you haven't already have an envelope please signal your fire by raising up your hands and um, the ushers will attend to you you see when i uh growing up um i'm used to i'm used to dancing and praising the lord when i'm giving the offering because the the, the, the bible says with the with the joyfulness of your heart praise the lord and and share your offering so i would like the choir to help me with a little song um just to make just to help the congregation and um, yeah, talk for me, please. Help us with a song. Sorry, I put you on the spot there. Yes, you did. You see, I'm, I'm, I don't know about you, but growing up, when we take the tithes on the offering, um, we 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 tend to do that with the joyfulness of our joy, of our hearts, because that's what the Bible has commanded us to do. So if you're, if you're happy to give your offering to the Lord and your tithes, and your tithes is a tenth of your income, you see, I've always tend to had a feeling that okay. when I'm giving, giving my tithes, I only have an income once in a month, but we ask every Sunday. Um, and it tends to make me feel like I'm giving my tithes every Sunday. So it's like, I don't know. When you're giving your tithes every Sunday, it's like, oh, okay. How much money do you want to come out of my pocket? The accountant, the accountant, of me, accountant in me is already thinking, um, that is, that what, four times, four times, that's 40% of your salary? So I'm like, uh, eh, eh, uh, but if you haven't had a chance this month, I know this is the last month of the, 
of the oh, sorry last Sunday of the of the of the month. So you have not a chance to give your tithes this month. This is this is the opportunity to do so, as the Lord has commanded. And we do not want to rob God. In fact, you can't really rob God. You're robbing yourself. Because at the end of the day, what do we use the money for? We use the money for the church, for the for the things of the Lord. Um, if any one of us is struggling, anytime the church is always there for us. So if you want to if you want to help the church, make sure that we have the funds to do the things of the Lord. I mean, who would like to have their own place? Who would like the church to have its own place? Anyone? Hallelujah. Yes, yes, more like it. So if you if you want to help the house, the house do do the work of the Lord, please give your tithes and your offering. Praise the Lord. So for me, go ahead. Say you are good and your mercy Can we rise? Forever. Can we rise? Yeah. Hallelujah. Our trauma is busy. Oh, yeah. oh you are good and your mercy Yeah, I'm going to quickly jump forever. on the rope and we can pick it up. Hallelujah. Father, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, that's more like it. That's more like it. Thank you, guys. Um, I just wanted to. I just wanted to do that because growing up, I've always danced, giving the offering. I don't know about you, but thank you very much. You can have your seats, and I would like to in, in, um, invite the young adults. As you as you can see, today is a young adult um, service. So enjoy. There's going to be a lot of energy as we do. You know how we do it. So yeah, take it away, guys. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, as you can see, the younger adults have come with him today. So if you've got energy, if you've got youth in your body, shout a living mighty hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, I like to I like to bully Owe. Where's Owe? Because I always tell him that he's old, but he's not old. <laughs> But today, I'm going to ask all of you guys to be youthful today and praise the living Jesus and praise God like you've never before. And I hope this service blesses you. So first thing today, like we said, uh, today is a young adult's takeover service and um, we're doing things in style because our generation likes style. Um, so uh, first of all, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be taking a quick survey. So there's a song that's been made. Um, it's got the same lyrics, but they sang differently. So I'm gonna ask um, Abu to play it, and I'm gonna ask you guys to vote which one out of the two is your favorite. Um, I think the ushers are passing papers around. So either just put one or two on your paper. Um, if you go, if you don't have a pen, please ask the ushers, they can help you get a pen. Or if anyone has a pen, they can pass you around to share to others as well. Um, yeah, so the instruction is just write one or two. So there's gonna be two songs played. It's the same song. It's um, it's got the same lyrics. It's talking about the the love of God and the love of Jesus and how He has um, come to save us and be our Christ. Um, but yeah, Abu, could you just play me the first one? On a hill he stood alone. Love poured out like To save and set us free Savior dying for you and me Darkness fell, the earth did quake For our sins his life he take Hope arose on day three He conquered death Sorry. 
to come up and we're going to be doing a little presentation and I hope you guys enjoy and be blessed in Jesus name. Praise the Lord. Oh that's very sweet. <laughs> Te technology but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Bear with us. We're trying something new. Um, Good morning everyone. Good morning. Um, this is an unusual pair that you don't normally see together on a Sunday. So this is going to be fun and interesting. Yes, um, so that for, those of, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Iko Lua. And this is... Abu. Abu, great. Um, so just a continuation of what David was just doing. Um, this morning, we want to talk to you about something that we believe is becoming more and more important um, in our day-to-day -day life. It's becoming more relevant. So we're going to show you a series of images, um, and we're going to, it's going to be an interactive session. So we're going to ask you, what, you know, which one do you prefer? Which, is, is there's, if, if there's anything peculiar to you about any of the images, just let us know. So we'll start at about now. Okay, so we've got two. Yep, so this is the first picture. Um, there are some frogs on screen. Um, I believe the colors mean that they're poisonous. So, yeah, that's all that really stands out to me. But does anyone really notice anything about either frogs that, you know, catches your eye? If you do, please put your hand up. Feel free to speak. Oh, we got oh, hey. oh, we got, oh, we got, oh, I like this. Uh, I think the one on the left looks more shiny. Looks like it's sweating. <laughs> okay, shiny. We've anyone got one else? more person at the top. The one on the right looks more like bluish in color and a bit raised than the other one. Okay, a bit more blue. Okay, we're getting quite a bit of interaction here. Um, the, the frog on the right has, um, oh my God, the the feet looks longer than the one on the on the left. Sorry, I can't remember the name of the, the pelvic. I'll just give you one second. All right, feet look longer. Anyone else? So the one on the right, uh, the spots on the legs, they're a lot smaller than the ones on the left. Oh, we've got play the difference. I like it. This is good. This is good. I like it. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. The one on the right looks like it's more living in the woodland. Okay, okay good, good observation. Good. good observation. I heard someone say. We've got one no more, then we'll move on to the next one. The one on the right is holding something. Okay, I didn't even notice that. Well spotted. Well spotted. Okay, so we'll move on to the next image. Right, so um, if you're someone like me and you love nature, got two images of waterfalls does anything jump out to you which one of these images makes you feel like it's a more beautiful representation of nature yeah. makes you want to connect with the with the beauty of god why the other one is just you know down it looks like if the torrent should fall on anyone that's it <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, other one it's um like in layers so it's cascading so yeah it's okay beautiful to me okay mm -hmm. i think i prefer the one on the bay looks like an angel is about oh to my goodness oh wait <laughs> <laughs> any any more any other takers The one on the left looks more peaceful. More peaceful. Good. I like that. Okay. 
Okay. So we'll we'll move on to we'll move on to the next. Oh, nice. Thank you. I feel like that. this is not going to give us away because you can see it better. <laughs> um, yes, Abu. All right. So we have a picture of two. I don't know how to say it. Feet, legs. Yeah, the bottom half of people. Um, anything that catches your eye, please let me know. Shows a little bit of more comfort walking than walking in heels for me, really. <laughs> I'm more of a general. Okay. So, so which one is that? B. You prefer B. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, please go ahead. The one on the right has more people. Okay. Good observation. Very good observation. The foot on A A looks up. Wow, how do you know what abnormal foot looks like? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, cool. I I think uh, the the shadows casted on B look more real. More real. Okay. 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 Uncle, at the very top, please. Someone please give Uncle Mike. Why do I feel like Uncle is about to just... I think across the three pictures, you've got one that is natural and one that is enhanced. Um, it's basically using system to ex- enhance one picture over the other. See, I knew it. The moment I said I was about to do yeah. something. I would see if I didn't give it all away, but close enough. <laughs> but very close, very, very close. close. Very and now close. we're going to do the big reveal. See, so if we can go to the next slide. Cool. So the pictures that we showed you earlier, a lot of you made observations that actually very true and point to the fact that one of the images are not real and the other is real. Um, so if you said, if you thought the one on the, thank you, <laughs> was um, not real, then give yourself a round of applause because you were right, you were able to spot what wasn't real. Um, so actually when you look at both images, like always said, that one's sweating. I don't know why it's sweating and shiny. Um, But this one has a lot more texture. So that's one of the ways in which if you're looking at images side by side, look look for things that are more natural and the one that's right has a bit more texture. Um, On to the next one. Cool. So this is the waterfall. Uh, The one on the right is real. This almost got me, not going to lie, because I was looking at it. I'm like, they're both real. Um, this one is not real. You can see here, this is my opinion, but you can't really see where the water flows into, although it could be covered by a tree line, but I might be wrong. Um, but the one on the right is real, even though I don't really think it looks that real, but hey. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, for me, I'm like, oh, this is so beautiful. This is what nature should look like, and this is what it does look like in certain areas. Can I have the picture, please? On to the next one. Next slide, please. Yeah, can try Oh, I've been doing it. Okay, so this is interesting because I need to say that one looks. um, Hey, no, no, go back. No, (laughs) Uh, this is the point. So, Anita, this is not my feet. (laughs) This is somebody's foot. Um, This one actually is the not real one because if you observe here, there's a foot missing. So you've got this. Foot yeah, here. you look surprised now, don't you? And this yeah, yeah, foot yeah. right he here is <laughs> this foot right here is missing. Um, but yeah, so this is real and this is not real. And I suppose it goes to show how easily we can take things at face value and perhaps not pay as much attention as to what is being presented to us. Next. All right. So this is a topic that has become more and more relevant in our day to day lives and. I mean, Akika are not experts, but we're just giving our little opinion on this, our little two cents, and the topic is AI. Woo! No one is excited. No one got But okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, so yes, yeah, so as Abu said, we're going to be talking to, to you today about artificial intelligence, and we're also going to touch upon cybersecurity. Um, you know, we know that we are a church that brings hope, equips life, and affects destiny. And our purpose as students of God is to be holistic um, believers that are well informed about our environment and society. 
All right, so a brief definition of AI. As I said, I'm no expert in AI, nor do I work in cybersecurity, but I do work with the cybersecurity team within my company. Um, AI stands for artificial intelligence. That is just the process of machine or computer to be able to emulate human decision making through inputs, processing, and an output. Um, I believe if a computer cannot do that, so what it does is not really AI, but that's just my understanding and interpretation of it. So if you could advance, please. Uh, uh, yep, here is the definition. Artificial intelligence refers to the simulation of human intelligence in machines designed to, designed to think and act like humans. These systems are capable of learning from experience, adapting to new inputs, and performing human-like tasks. AI is utilized in various applications, including um, natural, language, natural language processing and speech recognition, decision making, and visual perception. Next slide, please. Right, so as I said, um, this is a topic that's becoming more and more relevant to us and part of our everyday life. So I wanted to just talk you through a few um, you know, AI applications or some things that some of you are actually already using. Show of hand if you use Alexa. You have Alexa at home. Okay. I love how it's all the kids that have raised their hand. You guys are paying for Alexa. I love it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> use it if your parents are not using it. Um, so yes, a lot of us use Alexa. Say, Alexa, play my favorite song. Alexa, what time is it? So that is an artificial intelligence and that is voice assistant. Uh, for those of us that have iPhones, we use Siri a lot. Um, if you use Siri, show of hand. <laughs> We're not close like that. Okay. Um, if you have Siri like mine, it's always talking to itself. And I, I'm like, I did not ask you anything. Like, Sorry, what did you ask? I'm like, I didn't ask you anything. Stop eavesdropping. Um, so we have Siri. Um, we have Socratic. So just to show you how much more relevant um, artificial intelligence is becoming. Socratic is an app um, that university and high school students use to explain very complex ideas to them. So it simplifies very complex topics into something that they can easily digest and understand. So it's also used within education. We have, um, we have ChatGBT. Show of hand if you have used ChatGBT. Okay. <laughs> This is what we like to see, okay? We're not here to vilify AI. We're here to you know, talk about how we can enhance our day-to-day -day life. So yeah, I use ChatGB2, T2, okay? Um, right here we have Write. This is an app that's used to um, write, create content for social media, text, and everything like that. So again, if you're like into business and stuff like that, people use that. Um, we have Google Lens. Um, for those of you that are fashionista, I know Abu, you use this. Yep, so I use it, let's say, if I see something public that catches my eye, but I can't really understand what it is. I can take a picture of it, run it through Google Lens, it tells me what it is. Um, I could also do it on my phone screen, so if I'm watching a video, someone's wearing a t-shirt or something like that, I like it. I would pause it, I know, great example. I hold the button down, I can draw around it, and Google will find out what the object is that I've highlighted. Show of hand if you've used Face app. I know my Facebook. Auntie, thank you for I being honest. I don't know what this is, actually. Thank <laughs> you for being honest, all right? So Face app was very famous on Facebook once upon a time, and they will ask you to see how you will look in 20 years' time. So if you want to see how good you will look when you get older, you would, you would try this, or you could try it to, you know, enhance your photos before you post it. Um, so, yeah, that's Face app. That is facial it's a facial recognition app that people use. Um, we also have, you know, face to gene. So this also is a facial recognition app that, you know, medical professionals actually use to diagnose. Um, so, you know, AI is not just being used, um, you know, at home or in education, but it's also being used within healthcare as well. Um, yeah, so as we've listed here, this is how you can use AI. So if you're not familiar with these, you know, ChatGBT, I think a lot of us are familiar with. We've got its equivalent to Microsoft and Google, um, and speech to text as well. So if you're someone like me that can get a bit lazy sometimes, I don't write minutes. I just ask it to transcribe because it just makes my job a lot easier at work. Um, so yeah, on to the next slide. All right, so we have the two different types of AI. Um, I wouldn't say these are two distinct different types, but they kind of fall in into each other. And just to make it you know, palatable for you guys, I've given you two different definitions. 
So we have the generative AI. Um, I think everyone, or most people, know what it is. Those are things like ChatGPT that, you know, you give it a prompt, it will generate a text, perhaps a video if you're using the model called DALI. Um, things like that, nothing really complicated. You give it something and it will give you something back out, more like an image, uh, a song as David created, or a video. Uh, we also have machine learning. That's just the process of which these computers actually interpret the data. So you give it a data set, um, it interprets it, it runs it through algorithm or code, and it gives you an output, and it makes that decision based upon the data that it was previously given. That is it, really. Great. So further breaking down ways in which we can use AI, um, uh, would you want to take the professional side? All right, so we have the professional side and we have the personal side. I'll elaborate on each of these points. Um, you can see two of the points have exclamation points on them. Myself and Ika will elaborate on them shortly. So we have code writing slash script writing. Uh, this kind of falls into something, um, an area that I would use it for. So in my line of work, we I work in IT, we use code or scripts to automate certain tasks for us or do certain tasks. Um, to learn a code, you it's like, it's like learning a whole different language, basically. So that might be quite tedious. You might not necessarily understand the syntax of it all. Um, so you could use a program like ChatGPT, for example, um, Let's say, write me a script that, I don't know, shuts down every computer in the business in 10 minutes. I'm not saying you should do that. It's not a good Please idea. don't do that. <laughs> but this is just an example. Are you meeting HR? Could, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just an example. Um, I still recommend that you understand what it gives to you, because at the end of the day, it can make errors. Um, and we'll touch upon that a bit later. Mm. So I could use it for something like writing a script. Um, image generation slash content creation. As I said previously, we have generative AI. That's the most popular type of AI I think most people use. Um, you say to ChatGPT, let's say, draw me a picture of a house on a field in the middle of Scotland, or something like that. You know, It will generate probably a pretty nice picture for you. You might necessarily not be able to tell if it's real or not, as we kind of got you guys upset for uncle over there. <laughs> But um, yes, the reason why I put an exclamation mark there is because there's a sort of moral slash ethical argument when it comes to it, um, especially in terms of content creation. So with AI, it is only going to output what it is originally given. In terms of images on content, it's gonna be given people's artwork. It will then generate something based upon people's artwork. Now the argument is that is it moral to use someone else's, I don't know, let's call it inspiration to generate an image. Is it sort of like plagiarism in a way? If that makes sense to you guys? Something. Yeah, are you stealing, yeah. Um, I'm not really sure what you guys think about that. I'll, let's say, hands up if you think you should use it and no problems. You can reference it. No, we've got a couple of hands up. I think, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's an ongoing debate at the moment, um, and I think in the future it will become more and more um, of a topic where you almost have to pick a side. But at the moment, I think people are still kind of navigating the waters as to whether or not it's ethical or unethical to use um, AI to generate image, as Abu said, because it's taking inspiration from work and, and, and stuff around there. Um, so just kind of moving on to... Um, personal uses so you know we already saw a lot of hands in the house um, people using the voice assistance to help them um, you can use it to plan your itinerary if you like to travel and you don't have time you can just go into chat gbt and say you know give me a two-day itinerary of barcelona for example and it will give you a, re a really good itinerary and you don't have to crack your head and do the research um, and yes yeah, so you can use it for document summarization at work um, you know, sometimes I use it if I want to summarize a very lengthy email into something that's quite succinct and to the point. I'd say, write this in a succinct and to the point way, and it would do it, and I sound really intelligent, and it's awesome. Um, <laughs> but beware, it uses U.S. English. That's your dead giveaway. 
Um, I've received CVs where people have used ChatGBT and forgot to amend the US English. And I was like, great. So Z instead of S. Yes, used a lot of Zs. Um, and you're like, yeah. And then it says, please insert your name. And they forgot to remove, please insert your name. Ah, so when you are using it, please do just verify and double check what it is that it is giving you. Um, so yeah, those are the different ways in which you can use it. And just to give you an example, actually. So yesterday, I typed into ChatGBT. I said, brainstorm how to manage a £2,000 debt because I don't know how to. Um, and this is what it gave me. It brainstormed the idea, made it look creative, made it look good. Um, and it made some suggestions, of course, not in great depth, but at least it points you in certain directions of what you should be thinking about and what you should be considering. So it might be that you have a project at work and you just need an idea initiation. Um, it's worth just maybe searching it and then you can then build upon that which he has given you. So that's an example there. Um, and also it's time efficient because trying to do this and the colors, yeah, that takes time. Next. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna run you through the risks of AI and then touch on a little bit of cybersecurity. Um, so of course we have over-reliance in the top corner with the exclamation point, meaning that not, not necessarily an issue, but it's a potential risk. Um, if you rely on these systems for your day-to-day -day life, and let's say it goes down, um, you're gonna be stuck in a bad place. Um, you're creating a single point of failure at that point. Um, I do believe ChatGPT had an outage a couple weeks ago. I know because I experienced it. I had to switch to the Microsoft one, which is not as good, even though using the same technology, so hey. So I'm an example, I'm not gonna say I'm over reliant on it, but I was caught out by the outage. Uh, we also have fake content, uh, which we'll touch on in a bit as well. Deep fakes, so those are mini manipulated pictures or images um, based upon real images to kind of, I wouldn't say deceive people, but they can be used to deceive people. Basically, they're fake videos, um, which are quite convincing as well. So you need to watch out for those. We have trust erosion. So it's kind of hard to distinguish between real and fake. Let's say the Daily Mail puts out a uh, article that um, has a deep fake video in it, says something controversial, uh, they come back later and say this was fake, you're kind of going to lose confidence in that orga organization. So that's something to be aware of. We have phishing. So who knows what phishing is? Show of hand if you know what All phishing right. is. Stop for me, Auntie Dilly. Okay. Cool. All right. Perfect. I need to run you through it. You all good? Basically, um, phishing is when someone impersonates a genuine party through an email or any sort of communication, let's say, phone calls too, yeah. Um, let's say you get an email from the CEO of the company if you're working in finance, hey, transfer a thousand pounds to this account, it's an emergency, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously that's not real, but that's an example of phishing. So yeah, we've got the WhatsApp messages as well, I think Moyen just mentioned, right? Yeah, WhatsApp broadcasts, there you go. Um, also have automation, so it ties with phishing. These AI systems can, like dish out phishing emails on a mass scale. So it makes life a lot easier for people to implement these mi malicious attacks on fraud. There you go. Uh, data leaks, so this is very important as well. So data can always get leaked. I would not recommend you put something like your bank statement into ChatGPT to, to give me a budget. If you're comfortable with that, go ahead. But you also have to be comfortable with the fact that one day <laughs> this might come out to the public. You know, big companies have data breaches all the time, which we hear about on news. We, a lot of the times we just ignore it, but it's not until it happens to you, then you're gonna be aware of it. So I'll just watch out for that. I don't recommend giving it your picture, any videos of yourself as well, um, just because someone can use your likeness. Um, I'm pretty sure on the terms condition of these services, it will tell you, hey, like, just don't do this. I'm not entirely sure about that, but just watch out for that. Um, I said trust issues, erode public trust in AI technologies, uh, false inaccurate information. Um, it's only going to output what is given as well. It can make, it can think, but it is not human intelligence at the end of the day. 
um, it could tell you one plus one equals five. Um, ask it that again, it will tell you it equals two. So that's just an example. I've experienced that in real life, actually. Um, I asked it to calculate the dimensions of the box for me because I couldn't be bothered. And it gave me the wrong dimensions. Even though I wasn't completely aware of the answer, I was like, this is a bit too big for, yeah. It gave it to me in liters. I'm like, that's not right. So I told it to like recalculate again. I was like, and then it gave me the right answer. I was like, yeah. Just watch out for that, guys. Um, and we have misinformation as well. Um, again, false information ties back to the deep fakes. can get out there. Just be aware of it. So if you could advance to the next slide, please. I am not Morgan Freeman. So here we what you example. see is not real. Well, at least in contemporary terms, it is not. What if I were to tell you that I am not even a human being? Would you believe me? What is your perception of reality? Is it the ability to capture, process, and make sense of the information our senses receive? If you can see, hear, taste, or smell something, does that make it real? Or is it simply the ability to feel? I would like to welcome you to the era of synthetic reality. Now, what do you see? <laughs> so, <clears throat> so that was one example. It. Elon Musk presented his new project in two. which he has already invested more than $3 billion. Musk's new project opens up great investment opportunities for British citizens. No project has ever given such opportunities to residents of the country, given the interesting features of the app and having seen how it works. We think it's safe to say that the experience is British. Great. Go. So how many of you know this man? Oh, no, no, no. Not no, Michael no. Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> Profiting from it. Sorry, Elon crazy. Musk presented his new project in which he has already invested more than $3 billion. Yeah. Musk's new... So the entire UK believes this man when it comes to finance. He is the financial, the financial darling of the United Kingdom. And that's Martin Lewis, right? So he gives uh, financial advice in terms of how to manage your finances and what have you. So this is a deep fake video of him, you know, endorsing a supposed business scheme from Elon Musk. Now, of course, this is a trusted individual. Daddy said he nearly fell for it. <laughs> uh, that's someone that knows finance, so for the rest of us. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, something like that. And the reason why we wanted, I'm going to go back because I don't want to, um, the reason why we, t we wanted to flag this, actually, is because this is a trusted individual that has built a reputation, and, of course, whatever he says, most people will believe it. And, obviously, now, you know, we live in a day and age where people pass information to gain something. AI, it can be used for good, and AI can be used for malicious intent. Um, you know, for all you know, sometimes, especially with the WhatsApp broadcast, you might get a broadcast that says, Daddy Gio said something. Please verify if Daddy Gio said that thing. Um, don't just run with it because we really do live in an age where these things can be manipulated um, with the faces of people that are trusted. Yep. So, so let's beware. I've given some tips on how to stay safe online, touch into cybersecurity a bit. So I run through it quickly. Uh, use strong, unique passwords. Please don't use the same password for everything. And if you do, don't make it simple, please. I beg add you. a one, add an at. Add exclamation mark here and there. Yeah, it makes it easy. I mean, it's harder for the machines to crack it, basically. Um, Two-factor authentication. Uh, does anyone know what that is? Cool. I guess you guys have the Microsoft Authenticator app for work or the Google Authenticator application, or you get a text or a phone call to you, you guys. Very important. I believe this banking apps make you do it as well. Um, software updated. Uh, keep your software updated. I put exclamation mark, which I'll explain later. Um, honestly, people find exploits all the time in your phones, your computers, your digital devices, so it's pertinent that you keep them updated. Uh, they are, there's something called a zero-day attack. That is an exploit which no one was aware of, and people take advantage of it. So the name zero-day comes from the fact that companies have no days to fix that issue. It's like 
fix it now, basically, as soon as possible. Um, I say exclamation mark because companies do release bad software updates um, from time to time. I know I work in IT, we don't update everything immediately. We, depending on what it is, we wait a couple of days if there's any reports from other people. Uh, but I, as a general baseline, I would keep your stuff up to date. Um, be careful personal information. Careful what you share online, basically. We all know that. Um, nothing too complicated. Um, we have check sender's email address, which I'll touch on to later. A lot of these impersonators, in their domain will be a little bit weird. Uh, you'll be able to catch something out on there. We have look for spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes. That's just people rushing to type an email. It will be badly formatted. We have verify links before clicking. A lot of the time, you can hover over a link that you are ask to click, it will show you the URL. It might not look legit or be from a legit domain. And we have, be wary of urgent requests. If someone says you need to pay this now, 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 don't do it. Yeah, pretty much that. And if you could advance to the next slide. Yeah, so can I just quickly add something to that part as well? So there's been examples of where you will get a text from a loved one. It might be a, some, you know, your child, I'd be like, oh, mommy, please, I need 10 pounds to get the boss, I need this. And sometimes people fall for it because it seems urgent and it seems from someone that they love. Um, so, yeah, if someone ever asks you for something, always just call them and hear it directly from them before you proceed and click any link. All right. Who remembers COVID? Who remembers COVID? Okay. Is this real or fake? What's wrong with it? No punctuation. Mm, okay. Yes, email address. What does it say? No, it doesn't say booper. It says bop. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And whose name is there? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, they send you an email. They send you an email. <laughs> yeah, and that email address. But yeah, this is an example of a phishing email. It, yeah. I would say this one is quite convincing. Not all are as good as this, but just to make you aware that there are malicious parties out there that are out there to get your data as well. So you have to stay vigilant and also be sensible with the use of AI. And I believe in the next session, the participants will touch upon that. And that is it from myself, Anika. Praise the Lord. Sorry, I left you guys in the dark. Let me just turn it on. See, I'm using technology. I'm too cool. I'm too cool. <laughs> I'll turn on the lights from here. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. Yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> See, AI. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, so, yeah, that was wonderful. I hope you guys have been blessed. Um, I hope you guys have gained a lot of information from that session. Um, so, this session, I was actually supposed to give you the results of the poll, but because technically we did not complete that poll. Um, I don't know if you guys have figured by now, but that song I played for you earlier was completely generated by AI. Every single part of it. I, nothing. All I entered into, that, into the AI was create a song talking about the love of Jesus, and that was it. And it created everything. Both songs, you didn't hear the second song, but the first one, you heard most of it. The voice, the instruments, everything, the lyrics was all generated by AI. And that was supposed to be the reveal to you guys. And um, that will lead us to the next segment of the service, which is talking, which we'll be talking about um, the use of AI in ministry. And it's something that touches my heart a lot because, you know, it's two things that I like. You know, for example, I like music and I want to know if, if it's okay for me to do that. You know, generate a song using AI. Is it okay for me to do that? Um, and I'll just welcome the facilitator for this session, Victoria and Mamie, to come up. And also, I will call on Owe, um, Moi, and Uncle, Uncle Jojo's dad. I always forget your name, I'm sorry. Uncle, <laughs> I'm sorry, your, your Uncle Jojo's dad to me now. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if you guys can just come down, um, we just get some seats for you guys to sit on, and our facilitators can stand. Thank you.
person will be the best of it. Assess it. Assess me that person will be. Oh, sorry, I'm part of the panel as well, sorry. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Thank you. <laughs> um, so the first session was incredibly informative. Um, there's very, well, I don't know that much about AI besides that at my work, we cannot use it. So this has been really good to know. Um, and also, I think the scams and the phishing things are really, really important for all of us to look out for. Um, I have people who have given thousands of pounds um, to people without realizing. So that's all really important. But what we want to talk about now today is how we can use AI in church and in ministry, because it's not entirely unhelpful. Um, it can be something that we can use to make our lives easier. And I think everyone here will have an important um, opinion on this. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Victoria to ask our first question. Yes. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, so first question, what are some of the ways AI can be a useful resource for us um, in the church? Any takers. I know you guys aren't shy, so <laughs> anyone who <laughs> wants to start. Okay, we'll go this way. Um, I'd like to commend everybody first. I think I was more surprised with um, Abu, and I know that's your handiwork. Well done. Um, he's been coming through that journey a long time. I appreciate it. And just to answer your question as well regarding the music that you played, even though I was probably going to fall for it, but there's a, there's a resource that can be used against it. It's called Ch Shazam, right? I can use that to probably understand feedback. I can use that to probably understand if it's real or not real, because there's a registered content archive that we can actually research. So that will work for it. Now, back to your question about what can we use AI for as per resource wise in the ministry? He gave a typical example. He did just tell the AI to do what? Generate me a music with a particular title. Exactly. So I think when we talk about AI in relation to that, it helps us, it takes a lot of time away from us and helps us think beyond what we are not going to be able to think about. So our level of thinking could be basically what we know. I probably my highest degree is uh, MSc. There's someone with a PhD. There's a level of understanding to that. But what the AI gets to do is he goes with patterns and he helps us search multiple places that we're not even able to get to. So part of the Bible, we're unable, able to like have the time to think deep about. We, the way we think is in sections, and the way the AI think is in patterns. So it helps you to look at patterns and then see what is your love of this particular kind of song, that particular kind of topic, and gives you typical examples that you might like. And then from that point, it becomes a, human, a kind of human decision, whereby you narrow it down. AI cannot do much for you apart from that. It's still up to you to finalize that decision. Hope that kind of kicks up the discussion. Yeah, I think um, one of the things I think we can use AI for in church or, I mean in church, as a resource in church, just tying back to what you said is, if you think about outreach and administration, um, just like any other organization or charity organization out there, um, there is a lot of emphasis on freeing up useful man hours to do much more strategic things and leaving the mundane repetitive things to sort of AI or the chat um, chat bots to do. So if you think about that as a resource in church for outreach, right, instead of having somebody sit down at a desk to respond to queries from visitors on your website or to respond to queries on your social media, you can have a chatbot set up to do that kind of thing, right? There's also the aspect of generating useful content, summarizing sort of sermons, right? Um, succinctly, like, like Ike said, and then putting those content out there. Again, it ties down, it ties back to just freeing up man hours to do much more strategic thinking, um, Leave, leave the people to look for a building <laughs> uh, instead of people to sit down and, and, and respond to things on, on the website. That's, that's my thoughts. 
Uh, I don't think I could have put it any more beautifully than Moi did. Um, I think he's, he's very spot on on that. I will only just put this distinction between it. Um, we, we must keep sacred stuff sacred and uh, human things human. We must know the difference. Like he said, admin stuff can be done by AI. Even the sermon preached by the pastor, if you want to, I mean, I can, I can argue against it, but I can sort of still even tolerate that a bit because the original content was done by someone with the inspiration of God. And then you can then use AI to summarize it, you know, succinctly. I can't pronounce that word, but that <laughs> word. <laughs> uh, uh, um, and, and just capture it in a nice way. You know, AI, they're, they're, when it comes to um, um, putting things more presentably, um, I think AI has enough resource to know what is easy on the eye. If you tell me to do, uh, I've never done any slides by myself. My wife, my wife helps me with that, you know, but AI can help with things like that because AI knows the right kind of colors to use that, you know, um, are easy on the eyes because whether we like it or not, or whether we know or not, there are some colors that are just, the moment it comes to you, you can't tell why you don't like this thing, but it just comes out really wrong. So AI can really help with that. Anita, you are always here. <laughs> <laughs> Please, she's more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. Can I say something? Okay. Sorry, I don't want to take your time. Um, I like the fact that the panel is balanced. There's the Bible guy, <laughs> there's, a funk, there's a funky guy, and then there's a straight guy. Um, <laughs> back to your comment. Uh, you made a comment about not taking away the rights of the spirit mind and handing it over to the artificial intelligence. It's a perception. You cannot do that. It will never do that. So don't even waste your time thinking about it. Okay? Don't worry your energy on that. Like it. What is it? Is there a difference? Is there like a level of understanding that someone needs to have maybe of scripture or of the Bible? I would hope that we're all Bible men <laughs> here. Um, but is there a level of understanding that someone needs to have in order to try to use AI in terms of like, um, I don't know, reading the Bible or making Bible plans or even generating a sermon and that kind of thing? Go for it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think, first of all, um, what AI is, I think from what Uncle just said, kind of opens that discussion around how to use AI in terms of it's a perception thing. Um, what an AI model actually does is it's almost like a tool for source of information if you don't want to go and find it yourself. So you don't necessarily need to understand the Bible for AI to quote John 3.16 for you or to quote any Bible passage for you. It will do that because the w like the previous session, what AI does is it uses um, a lot of statistics and research to gather information that humans know. So the Bible, the Bible is everywhere. You know that the Bible, the, everything in the Bible you can find anywhere. So it's easy for AI to get every single verse and even every version that ever existed. It would gather all of those information. So it's now up to you to then use it wisely from what you understand what it's supposed to do. So if you if you take AI and say, okay, I'm going to use this thing to generate a sermon, you've taken that perception of, yeah, this is going to do my work for me, and I'm going to use it as a source of inspiration rather than use it as a source of information. And that's where, that's where the, the balance needs to be drawn, and that's where, like I said, perception comes into place. Because if I'm, if I asked, if I, because I'm someone who uses ChatGPT a lot at work, I don't like to do research. I just enter, oh, find this for me. And it gives me all of this information. And even then, one of the things I like about ChatGPT, at least the model I use, is there's always a caveat at the end that says, so for example, I'm an engineer, and there's sometimes I'm trying to find distinctions between certain things and certain materials. I ask ChatGPT to give me that distinction. It always gives me a caveat at the end saying, oh, I've given you all of this information, but still, you can go and <laughs> um, do your research from an expert point of view, do your testing, everything I've given you, make sure you test that what I said is right, essentially, but this is just what I think. It would give you that sort of like, but there's always that caveat at the end that I always give you. So I think from that point of view, like I said, it's, you don't need to understand the Bible to use it. 
So um, your question, great point. Your question around whether or not you need to understand AI to be able to then, right? I think I'll take it from two perspectives, right? The first, the first half of the question is if you need to know or understand the AI to be able to use it. Straight answer is no, right? A basic understanding of the kind of context or the kind of prompts, right? And it's like asking, walking up to Owe and asking him a question, right? So you probably don't need that much. You don't need to be an expert to be able to use AI. Just type in the question and then it gives you the, there's this old saying that we used to say, garbage in, garbage out, right? Pretty much. Then the second aspect about the application of that to scripture, right? I feel like the, and maybe I'm probably delving deep into what you said about having a Bible guy understand. I, I feel like um, the understanding or interpretation of scripture is a very nuanced um, process that requires a bit of human interpretation and also inspiration of the Holy Spirit, right, which is very key. So, like David rightfully mentioned, there needs to be that balance. Probably even not just a balance, probably a sort of tipped scale um, such that you are ensuring that you are using AI more as a, as a tool. Like one of the very useful tools that you can use it with Bible scripture is research and also making very thematic connections. So, understanding where one work of the Bible links to another with scripture, you, you know, just doing those research and analysis, right? But then the process of interpretation of that scripture then comes down to the personal connection, the interpretation of the Holy Spirit that the AI can never give you, right? Which, which is very key. So that, that sort of tipped skill, um, such that there is not, there is the reliance on AI just for data collection, analysis, information provision, and so on and so forth. And then um, you then being inspired by the Holy Spirit to sort of interpret that, that, that scripture and understanding the context of the passage. Or, yeah, passage, right? Yeah, the Bible, Bible scripture. Sorry, can I just add yeah. to it? Okay. Um, interestingly, this morning as we were driving down to church, <coughs> I was excited for one reason, we have a family group, myself and my kids and my missus, and we kind of inspire ourselves within that particular family group. And I sent a message, which was, can you guys make sure you read Psalm 24, verse 1 to 3? And then read Psalm 23, verse 1 to 3. I got that message sometime around Thursday, uh, which was Psalm 24. Uh, it was, I was meant to read Psalm 24, but I forgot. I was reading Psalm 23, verse 1 to 3. Then I was in the bathroom this morning, and then it clicked. I've been reading Psalm 24, right? Then it now clicked like, okay, there's a connection between Psalm 24 and 23. But I was actually advised to read Psalm 23. I didn't know. I was reading the wrong one. But afterwards in the shower, I understood the connection. So while we're driving down today... And I'll give that my own pastoral teaching in the car. <laughs> and I made them understand the role of being on the mountain to you being, having, living in the green pastures and X, Y, Z, in that sense. What am I trying to draw out? That's my context. Now, let me draw something. Let me take you back to 1996. The Bible is right there and it's been there for us for a very, very long time. It's a source of truth. We ask questions we get answers from the Bible, right? Now, in 1996, when the internet age was just coming up and technology was coming up, there's a website we call askjeeves.com. I'm not sure, maybe yeah. the, some people know Ask Jeeves. That's probably one of the first search engines that we ever had. The Bible is a search engine. That's another search engine. But the difference between today's world of chat GPT and, and Ask Jeeves is the fact that we didn't understand something called, which Abu mentioned, ML, machine learning. So the machine learning is that part of technology or language that, that kind of like records everything you say, right? If you say it, he says it, everybody gets say it. Then the next time you ask the question, it brings everybody's stuff together and present it to you. It's still stupid, it's still jargon. In, in IT we say it's jargon. It's your responsibility to interpret it. 
So there's no spiritual boundary. There's, there's no interaction between that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So C, chat GPT, which I call NLP, which the industry call NLP, which is a natural language processing stuff, right? And you already have that. It's your, it's your Siri. That's another search engine. So it's not going to take anything out. That's something that can be useful to the ministry as well. We need to understand the role of technology, the responsibility of the ministry, and our individual role in making both together useful to us. I think that deserves a round of applause. That was a really good response. <laughs> Sorry. That was really good. Thank you for that. Can oh, I wait, just, yeah. uh, at, the, at the risk of being vague, there's only so much you can take before you shout. <laughs> <laughs> We can agree that there is a it's a it's a parallel world, but for you to equate the Bible as a search engine is almost heretic because the Bible is letters. Now the search engine of scripture is the Holy Spirit. He's the one that searches all things and he's the I'm sorry. Finish? No, you yes. will finish, but okay. Daddy, you know me. Don't delve into the environment you don't want to delve into. No. <laughs> and don't let us get into, don't let us take away the topic, Please right? Finish. No, no. Finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So um, the Holy Spirit was the one who breathed the word. Jesus Christ himself said, you know, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. So anybody can Google something and then try to add God to it. If God is not the source of that thing, the power will be evident in the speaker. This happened with Jesus. The scribes knew scripture from beginning to end. But when Jesus Christ came and taught, they said, this person speaks with authority. He didn't speak like the scribes. So if we want to deal with intellectualism, then we can put intellectualism one way and say, this is what IT can do, and that's it. If you want to speak about spiritual and sacred things, there is only one source. Even if you take the Bible now and you are so intelligent that you can quote it from the beginning to the end, the power, when somebody that has spiritual power comes and crees you, it will be evident because that's where everything begins to fall down. There is only one spirit that can convict. It is the Holy Spirit. He is called the spirit of truth. The Bible is truth, but without the spirit of truth, there is no life in it. So there are many skillful people with scripture, and there is a place for that. But it will not go beyond your intellect if that person does not, does not carry with them the spirit of God. If we can't make this distinction, then we will come here and argue on a cerebral level. We'll congratulate ourselves, and then we'll go and say, yes, we can use ChatGPT and AI to do all manner of things. There's places for these things, and we must understand that. You know, the admin stuff... It's all good. But when it comes to sacred things, when it comes to things that have to do with, you know that only spirit can contact spirit. And only man has spirit. And it is that spirit that is a man that the Holy Spirit breathes into to communicate God things. If you, if you remove that, then all we have is we have religion and we have all manner of things. We have no God in it. So we have to be very careful with that, please. Yeah, um, just to follow uh, what always just said, um, I feel like I'm the guy that's supposed to be in the middle because, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm part of the spiritual side. I'm also part of the AI side. But um, in all seriousness, um, one thing that I believe is, again, like always said, they're saying things that, ChatGPT can never do, AI will never do. <laughs> um, but in the context of what we're trying to say, in the context of ministry, so let's take a sermon for example. You know, we can gather all sorts of information, but at the end of the day, what's the sermon supposed to do? It's to bless the people you're speaking that sermon to. It's to minister to those people. Um, and that's something that I think is paramount in what we do in ministry. Um, I'll use that, uh, the song that I played earlier as an example. One of the things that, as much as I would like to use ChatGPT to songwrite for me, because because songwriting is difficult. <laughs> Even as 
just in the world, just on a circular level, songwriting is difficult on its own. Now to take songwriting from an inspiration from the Holy Spirit point of view is also another thing entirely. And there's certain things that that um, song that AI can't do when it comes to songwriting. We can, it can generate the sound. It can, like, like I said, it generated everything in that song. I did not have any input whatsoever apart from do this for me. But one of the things from a musician, from a worshiper point of view is you can have sound. Sound is something that's sacred as well. But even though it was generated by AI, there are certain sounds that comes from the Holy Spirit that AI would never be able to do for you. And as much as I want to use AI to write my songs for me, I, un I have the understanding that when it comes to songs that need to minister to people and touch people from a spiritual, on a spiritual level, I can't rely on AI. I can rely on AI to, yeah, like, <laughs> not to call you out, but <laughs> he, he told me he did something between him and his wife. He wrote a, he used AI to generate a song for her about, yeah, yeah. about the food that she made. Yeah, yeah. About the uh, Asaro. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I can use AI to do that, you know? I can, <laughs> Why are you running? <laughs> it was a beautiful song, by the way. It was Lara's Asaru. It was, it was, don't, so don't you, test it. You, you can use AI to do all of these things, but when it comes down to the spiritual level, there's certain things that you can use AI to make, but I don't want to, I don't want to go too deep into spiritual level in terms of like sounds, for example. There's certain sounds that you play on the keyboard that will carry somebody to heavens and they will stay there for the rest of the day. And it's not because anybody can come, anyone else can come in and play that as that same sound and it will do nothing. Do you get what I mean? But that sound has come from a different inspiration to what they were playing it. That same sound that the AI generated, I could have come up with that same sound myself mm. and it would have a completely different effect. And to be honest, when the song was going on, I was like, nobody is catching the Holy Spirit. Nobody's like, oh, wow, God. And I can tell you it's because it was created by AI for a fact, that that was why it probably didn't touch anybody's heart. Even though it was about the love of Jesus. And if you read the lyrics, you understand the depth of what it was saying. If you look at it from a face value point of view, but from a spiritual connection point of view, it wasn't there. And that was the thing I wanted to point out. It's just unfortunate that technology, AI decided to fail us today. But <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing. It's, it's AI, it can fail. At the end of the day, it's man-made. But yeah. Uh, um, oh yeah. 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 Thank you, sir. <laughs> I was going to interrupt, but that was perfect. Um, now to spin it to like a bit more of a consumer point of view, because a lot of us here, we are consumers. We are on social media. We are uh, consuming so much information daily. When it comes to content relating to the church or even like key figures within the Christian community, how careful do we need to be of AI-generated content? I, I'll just, so that I can be really quick on this one. Um, I would say, just allow the Spirit of God to help you. Don't, don't, don't get out there being suspicious of what is AI, what is isn't AI. You know, and I think that's where it ties in with what he was saying about perception, your own interpretation. Okay, um, if you have the Spirit of God in you, the Spirit of God is responsible for letting you know the source of anything. So if you can just trust the Spirit of God in you, that is why God made sure we are all, as believers, sealed with the Holy Spirit. If you try to use your intellect every time to discern the source of something, you'll get it wrong. Can I touch on Please. that? Please. Okay. I'm an individual of spiritualism at the same time, knowledge. They have two separate roles that play in my life. There are times where my dependency is 100% knowledge. And there are times where my dependency is led by the spirit. Knowledge being the fact that whatever I've been able to take in offers me the opportunity to like analyze the, the stuff I've got all in front of me. And then apply my analysis and decisions to that particular. I don't need the spirit to tell me any other stuff. Why am I saying that? Someone sends you a WhatsApp link, right? It doesn't have to be a spiritual link. It doesn't have to be. It could be from anybody. I do get messages on my phone, and the person just says, hello. Number one, use your normal thinking to it. So there's a difference between human intelligence 
and artificial intelligence and spiritual intelligence. Three parts. Maybe that's a three-factor authentication we might need in the future. So you get this message. I think, number one, you look into your contact list. Have you ever had a phone call from the same number before? One, you're doing your due diligence. You don't need the spirit to lead you on that particular part. No more due diligence. Two, the name, does it resonate to you? Have you ever come across it before? Three, if you don't have it, don't waste time. Delete it or block it. If whoever needs you will come across you through a different means. This is my step that I get to use. That is that step. All those steps that you mentioned. That is the spirit of God that is leading you to take that there is no spirit. That, that is not about spirit of God. See, no, no, no. You, you need to understand. You need to understand something. If you don't have enough knowledge about an, a particular information, there's nothing about spirit leading you anywhere. So if you don't even have that biblical knowledge, forget about spirit coming to your door to knock on your door. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So when you say the spirit leading you, it's like saying, oh, I have a budget of $2,000 to spend. And then you're needing the spirit to lead you to spend it. It doesn't, for me personally, it doesn't work for me. Like I said, there's the spiritualism part. There's a normal information you have to progress it. It's like you're at your workplace and they're telling you something of a procedure. You have your procedure and process in your workplace. Then you need your spirit to lead you on that. Sorry, you're not meant to be in that workplace. So you've dichotomized spirit from intellect. I haven't. That's where the I haven't. problem is. I haven't. <laughs> 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 that, that's why that's why I spoke it, it, it's okay anyway so we go back that, that's just my basic example yeah. and then we'll move on from that point fab alright I think we're going to do a poll now aren't we Mamie uh, <laughs> I'm scared we're going to be here all day so yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to take a quick poll of our panellists here um, do you think it would be fine to use AI or a computer-generated model to write a whole sermon from the start to finish? Hands up. If you think it no, would be no fine to use only. AI to generate a whole sermon, hands up. So, so this is us. Wait, hold yes. on. I, saw, uh, <laughs> I said... Okay. Okay. Up. okay. <laughs> Uncle's the only one that thinks so, and I think we understand why he thinks so. I'll give you one minute to make one final point about why he thinks it's okay. Why I think it's okay. Or why you think it's not okay. Sorry, oh, Okay, ahead. okay. I'll make it very, very, very brief. Um, in terms of sermon, I think I look at two things, right? The first thing is authenticity and connection, right? One big part of a sermon from a pastor's perspective is um, in delivering that sermon is what's the authenticity, what's the personal connection, and what's the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that leads to the interpretation of that sermon in terms of context, right? The second bit is nuances and context, right? For every passage or for every Bible verse, there are nuances, like I mentioned earlier, there are contexts, there are um, um, connections, thematic connections, right? That you actually require the Holy Spirit to be able to help you to interpret, right? That aside, I think that the use of AI in terms of sermoning will be very helpful to create, <laughs> to help you with creating, you know, talking points um, as to how to direct, you know. Again, maybe that almost contradicts what I said, but there's a very good use with creating talking points in helping you section in your, your thinking or your thoughts, even if it's to generate slides that you need to use, right? So that's how I think that it can be useful. Where do I sit? I sit in the middle. Okay, you sit in the middle. Always sit as... So I, 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 I understand what he's saying. And let me just amplify that very well, okay? Moi has said it really, really well because I think there's a misunderstanding to think that we don't like AI or something. AI is great, you know, and there's a place for human knowledge as well. So he said the inspiration will come from the Holy Ghost and everything. Now... For example, if you're going to go to a country you've never ministered before, you might not know the, 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 the culture of those people. You might not know certain themes that are in play. For example, me now, I can be teaching on the word of God and I'll start talking about uh, uh, Transformers and the rest of them, if you guys know Optimus Prime. And it makes sense to me, but it might not make sense to you. But that's cultural. 
if you bring in AI at a time like that, when you've received the message from the Lord that you want to deliver, the spirit of that message still remains what it is. But to bring context to the people that you are trying to deliver, Paul said that to the barbarians, I was a barbarian. To the Jew, I was a Jew. To the Roman, you bring AI to help you help those people. But the original source of that message still has to come from God. Amazing. Okay, I think we can wrap it up there. <laughs> um. I think, I think for everybody not to have the wrong perception, you need to also understand this. The, the role of the church is one thing. The role of technology is another thing. Don't, miss, don't just mix it together. Before time, during time, after time, technology is simply an enabler. It's an enabling tool. Get that into your head properly. So for whatever you want to do in life, you need a support. You can't walk properly. You need a stick, right? You need to get to point A to B. You need a car or a bus. It is an enabler. It's not taking over the sole responsibility of whatever you want to do. So don't mix it up. Again, there is the human intelligence. There's a technology or what you call artificial intelligence, right? And there's the introduction of the spiritual intelligence. It's not being taken out of space. They all stand individually. They have different. You can have. You can take the chance to mix the three to get your response. You can take two to get your response. It's up to you. Wow. Okay. Um, if anyone else would still like to have this discussion, I think you can find them all. <laughs> they will still be here. Um, thank you so much, everyone. That was a great thank conversation. Thank you. <laughs>
you know, and they would not have known the plan that God had predestined for the world. You know, that's the one thing that AI can never know. And, but yeah, just to round up, uh, and just to say that, yeah, AI has its place and we should use it, <laughs> we should use it with wisdom, wisdom from the Holy Spirit. So take that wisdom back to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit how you should use your AI. Um, and yeah, that's just everything that we have for today. Just to say that, uh, to appreciate uh, the, the young adults, I think we can do better than that. Yeah. Um, I stayed glued where I, uh, I sat, and it was as if uh, the information, were, uh, all the information uh, were meant for, for me. And I'm still going to engage everyone that spoke here uh, this morning uh, in order to do a rebranding. All right? Um, even the word artificial, uh, I've started to query it, whether the artificial intelligence is actually artificial, sincerely speaking, uh, because every knowledge is sourced from God. Every knowledge is sourced from God. But for every, every information, there are, there are advantages, there are disadvantages. For every invention, there is an advantage or advantages, there are disadvantages. The problem with human beings is that uh, we go for the uh, what looks like the best of the two sides, and usually it's always the, the, the disadvantages uh, because it's easier to assess. Them. God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. I think let everybody go out from this place to know that there is a place for AI. There is a place for it. But AI can never take the place of God in your life. It is God that directs the activities of human beings. Once again, I want to thank you all. That was a beautiful one. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's please be on our feet as a return. All glory to God who is the source of all things. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of us. Glory to himself, all of the glory must be to the Lord, to the Lord, yes, all the glory must be to the Lord, for he alone is. Adoration to your name, God, for he alone is a praise. No man, no man on earth. Oh, 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 no, 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 no.
this week that God replenishes our knowledge that God will be our source of direction that as we go in the new week that started today that the spirit of discernment is refired within us and that we are led by the spirit of the living God alone to be able to carry out our daily task we continue to rely on God as our source as our only source of our source of strength source of wisdom source of knowledge that God in his infinite mercy will go with us he has already gone ahead of us because he alone knows what this week is going to be about what this week entails and so we are going to pray that God as we go into the week God you bless us afresh with the spirit of discernment with the spirit of discernment that Lord all the steps everything we'll do this week will be led and advised by the spirit of the living God that Lord every road every journey we take in this new week that lord you will go with us you go ahead of us that we will not be victims of casualties in the name of jesus that lord you will continue to watch over us your angels they'll continue to guide and watch over us as we go into this new week that lord you will refreshing us in the name of jesus with strength with strength from above in the name of jesus you said in your word that the path of the righteous continues to shine brighter even unto into a bright into a brighter day that lord as we go that our path will continue to shine brighter and brighter that the knowledge that we've been equipped with today that lord will be able to make use of it in the right way in the name of jesus that lord nothing that we've heard today will fall into on fertile ground in the name of jesus that everything we've heard and listened to today lord will yield good fruits in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless and worship your holy name. We thank you because only you could have made today possible and we thank you God for all the days that led up until today and we are thanking you for the days that go beyond today that Lord, you will continue to be our strength, you continue to be our guide and that Lord will continue to rely on you and we'll know that only you Lord, you are the source of all things for from you are all things and to you are all things and so we bless and worship your holy name for in Jesus mighty and much less than we have prayed so I want you to I want us to share the grace in fellowship and so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore amen and we declare surely his goodness and mercy shall be all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen i want you to turn to someone on your right and declare the good the goodness of the mercy of god surely his goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life forever and ever and to another person you say surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen Hallelujah!